there, there you are. Get in here. Here's what day is it? Direct to Laura, always trying to sewer me. Because uh, on the sheet here, it says, oh, this is, this is what we got coming up on the show. It's Thursday, January the 20th. And I'm just like, <laughs> it is not. We missed a day somewhere there. Yeah, yeah, like, the other day, day. I think yes. it was like the 16th, and I said the wrong date. Because I, I just read whatever's here. Like, I just read whatever's there. <laughs> yeah, I'm a right. professional. Okay. Oh, so, Laura, oh, you, need, you need to have told us. Because we would have all been like, yes, today's the 20th. <laughs> sure it You're is. You're calling a prank. you got to include us. Because yeah, yep. right. uh, we were all like, no. It's, it's the 19th. It's the 19th. It's, it's the, the 19th, 19th today. It's the 19th. Okay. Yes, yes it, it is the 19th <laughs> today. <laughs> the month but, is flying by. But more importantly, Tom, uh, Tim, it's Chip Day. Uh, yes. 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 <laughs> I, uh, and, and we have a couple of imports for Chip Day. Yeah, I saw that. Ooh, a good pal, Dougie. Having? Yeah. At uh, Across the Pond, has uh, he has an eclectic mix from uh, <laughs> Across the Pond. Uh, a Does Scottish mix of pigs, pigs in the Blanket was one of them. And what yeah. was the, what was uh, the other one? The other one, one? Turkey is and Turkey and, and Stuffing. Tur turkey and Stuffing. Turkey and stuffing. I really like the Pigs in the Blanket. I have already sampled. Okay. Have you? Yes. Okay. They're actually not called chips. They're called crisps. 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 I have right. not tried. Yes. Okay. Yes. So um, I'm going to have to make my way. You have not been to Across the Pond yet. It's, it's, it's a spot that we generally it's go awesome. to, Emily. It's, it's very good. And mm -hmm. I, uh, I eat them out of uh, house and home yes. when I go there yes. <laughs> with all of his crisps. <laughs> every, oh, every, other, like every other Thursday here is Chip Day, and it's Tim, Tim's favorite day. <laughs> Tim's yes. favorite day. It is a fun day. And it I actually is. forgot about it, and I went into the canteen. I'm like, oh, yay. Oh, <laughs> how exciting. Oh, Thanks to Producer Tansy for contributing. Yes, that's right. Yes. Not exciting is a freezing rain morning for the second Ooh. time this week, Brian. Uh, yeah, we don't like this. No, mm -hmm. uh, we're, we, we want to kick this away. Uh, we would like to see some sun, but again, no sunshine in our mm -hmm. forecast. Oh, hey, we're on the couch. Emily's here. Chit chat time. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, the trailer park boys are coming to Niagara. I watched it, and I think um, <sighs> there was so much profanity. Mm -hmm. I couldn't, like, I was like, ooh. <laughs> that's really? Our editors had a really hard time cutting that piece. I know. Like, beep, that's what I beep, said. I was beep, like, beep, hey, guys, beep. I need like 20 seconds. We can't and get I it. need it to be like, no. And I had to search for that little I'm segment. I think so. I think originally it aired on Showcase. Like, so it was on TV for 12 seasons. So, oh, yeah. yeah. But like the perfect. So obviously you can't be swearing on Showcase. And maybe I so, didn't have Showcase. Um, <clears throat> maybe I would. I didn't have so that, so, it when it first so, came out. So it was on for tw it was on for 12 years. Yeah, and then it's time. got and then it's got. And that's the great thing about Netflix, too, because it's then been it, on Netflix for years. Too. And then it gets a whole new life and a whole new audience. Yeah. Well, like, the generations, right? Yeah, totally. yeah. And listen, that show is not for everybody. <laughs> no, it's for, it's for a lot of people. <laughs> Here's the other thing, too, is a lot of the time, like Niagara Comic Con, when Niagara Comic Con happens, mm -hmm. like some people from Niagara Comic Con come here, here? and yes. maybe sit yes. on this couch. Oh. So we do get people from Right, that. I got to so brush up so, on my trailer. So we, we need to get the Ryan Cokes ready. We need to get the Ryan Cokes ready. Right? See, I do know all the jokes. I just never really watched the show. Yeah. Uh, this is kind of fun. You can now make Dolly Parton cornbread and biscuits at home. The Grammy-winning award actress has partnered with Duncan Hines to bring something a little special to the baking aisle. I've got something special just for you. I once went to a cookie exchange, and have you ever been to a cookie exchange at Christmas time? Yeah. Well, I Tim, I, I'm guessing no, you haven't been. <laughs> I've reaped the rewards of a cookie okay. exchange. Well, this was my very first cookie exchange, and I thought it was just a bunch of girls getting together to have cocktails and eat cookies. So I just brought like 12 cookies. I didn't realize I had to bring 12 batches of cookies until like the night before. So I was all about the Duncan Hines brownie mix. <laughs> I cooked like 12 <laughs> boxes of that. So I am all about baking from a box. So thank you very much, Dolly Parton. Oh, that's what you have to do? Yes, you have to bring a batch yes, for everybody. Yes, for how many people there are, you bring a dozen of your cookies and then you take oh home. Oh my goodness. Yeah. It is, it's, it's I'm lot. with you. That was I, like a, yeah. Yeah. It's, it's so a we lot. did it at, it, here in the newsroom it's many, lot. many years so ago. So don't invite me. In a few years, <laughs> for the first few years, we did the baking and then we're like, like no, and then you wanted, <laughs> and then to we just went out for it, dinner yeah. instead. Yeah. You just yeah. wanted to make it twelve girls are sitting you, around you, eating cookies. You like to bake? I don't like you? to bake. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, you've been you've yeah. been baking for us. Yeah. You had she this, made us uh, banana bread oh, yesterday. That was, that was, that was so that good. Was, there was like little chocolate chips chocolate, in there. Little, little chocolate chips. Yeah. Mm, did you get any of that, Brian? Not from a box. Not yes, I did. I got some. You're always enormous. I know there's no blueberries in it. Well, it doesn't matter. I try to get my share when Annette bakes. I do try to get my share. Thank you, Annette. And we could we could always use more. Is that a hint? All right. <laughs> All, right. All right, let's get to traffic this morning. Oh, yay. 
you're here. It's Thursday. Come on in. We have some things to talk about because anytime Brian is putting a forecast out there, I always try to listen to his forecast Thank you. of what I'm going to wear the next day. Exactly. Thank you. Right? Exactly. We were talking yesterday. There's some inclement weather co incoming. Morning, uh -huh. guys. Um, Morning. Obviously, Morning. Our, our director, Laura Brody, who's wonderful at her job, I always try to pump her tires so she treats me well and not yell at me all the time. Um, <laughs> I don't think she was listening to Brian's forecast. She was because she wore winter boots in, I think. And then a, a change. Oh, she she and changed. Then she changed into these fabulous boots that we're going to show. Wow! Look, 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 look at those oh boots. My. Those are awesome, Goodness. Laura. They are, they really <laughs> I love are. Them. They look yeah. like socks with Don't heels. They? And look at those heels. <laughs> like, look at the they the look like clear. socks with heels. <laughs> Aren't they phenomenal? Oh. Very Barbie. <laughs> They're very barbed. Are they made for walking though? We gotta see you walking in them. Of These boots they are. are made are for walking. Are they made walking. for freezing rain? Yeah, but yeah, maybe <laughs> not for that. No. I would say no. No, I, I don't think no. so. But, okay. But, uh, yeah, wow. those are Laura, some foxy boots. Tell us, did you wear those in or you wore other ones in and then changed into those? <laughs> She, she changed, changed, changed into them. Into them. Wow, that's, okay. that's, that's what you have to do on a freezing rain. And morning. thank you for doing that yes. too. Yes, <laughs> and and I'm glad you listened to you to know that you wore boots in and, and then changed into those. Can you imagine? Those. She slips and falls and breaks her leg, and then we see the stretcher, and With then the oh, boots? that's Laura. There's her boots. There's the boots. <laughs> yep, yep, yep. So this could be a new thing, pink boot day. Yes. Yeah. Yes. yes. On Thursday, because we have no tie Friday or bow tie yeah. Friday, right. so maybe pink boot pink day. Boot day. We'll all have to find some So now we all have to go buy a pair of pink boots. Right. Okay. Well then. My arm. Okay. You know what, Emily? We can expense it. <laughs> amazing. There you are. That's amazing. Like there Does you Louis Vuitton make pink boots? <laughs> Wow. I have no idea. Lord, I love how you go right to the top. Yeah. <laughs> Most expensive ones you can find. There you go. Yeah, don't take All me right. to dinner. That's the <laughs> bitch we know and love. All right, yeah. let's get to it, Brian, because we All got right. some yeah, stuff so, to talk about. So be prepared. Uh, well, today you find us here at Pilatary Estates Winery, such a beautiful venue, and we're talking all about ice wine. Tis the season, Richard. Take me through the process, and then tell me what we have in front of us here, because we've got two very different types of wine. Yes, so we're very excited. Uh, our Pilatary family is getting ready for the ice wine harvest. The cold weather is coming. We're waiting for minus 8 degrees minimum, uh, waiting for that temperature so the grape is completely frozen solid. Okay. That way, when we do go to press it, we're actually only getting one drop per grape. That shocks me. I cannot believe it is only one drop. Now, is it a big drop or is it a little drop? No, it's just a regular, <laughs> regular drop. Just a that very, make a difference? Very special <laughs> drop. So what happens is, is that at that temperature, all the natural water stays inside the grape. Right. And it just gives us the nectar, all those hidden flavors that get you those exotic treats that makes a nice wine. Wow. Okay, so this here is harvested at minus 10, the reserve ice wine, correct? Right, yeah. So this is the bougier one. This one over here, this is what we call late harvest. Tell me the difference here. So ice winers are a flagship wine, like you said, harvested when the grape is completely frozen at mm -hmm. minus 10 degrees Celsius. Whereas the late harvest, what we can actually do is that we can get a second pressing of that ice wine grape. Oh, okay. Uh, and we're getting about half the sweetness, about half of those exotic flavors. Uh, another way that we can make this as well is that if we want to, we can harvest this earlier mm -hmm. uh, when, when it's warmer weather, just letting the grapes hang a little bit longer to ripen on the vine. So the big difference between them is actually the viscosity, the thickness between them. The ice, tell. the ice wine is a much thicker, more uh, almost syrupy wine, being that specialty dessert wine. And it's a huge difference in taste. Yes, yes. It's it's exactly half the uh, the sweetness uh, going from late harvest to ice wine. Wait, which one should we try first? We should try the ice wine first. Okay. It's, it's our big flagship one. It's our most special. So Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> These tiny little glasses, I love them. Mmm. <laughs> So sweet. Yeah, so in regular wines, when people say they taste a little bit of strawberry or a little bit of cherry or plum, that's all you get with the ice that's wine. That's all you get. It's, it's the nectar. That's yeah, it's out. like a fruit yeah. salad in my mouth. Yeah. Now, is it true that if you were to put, to drink ice wine, are you supposed to put it under your tongue and let it sit there for like a few seconds and then swallow it and then it's like a completely different wine? I heard that this morning. Well, we don't want to be too bossy with it, but if you really want to optimize how much flavor you can get out of it, really try to get it to all the corners of your mouth. Ah. And uh, the, the first sip, of course, not as important because you want to be able to, to freshen up your palate and get the true ice wine flavors on the second right. and third sip or even once you finish the glass. Okay, right? <laughs> try it again. Mmm. You can totally tell the difference if you actually make that little tiny effort. Oh, yeah. Okay, then, now let's try this one. For late harvests, we do have some people who come to the winery and they say, wow, it's an amazing ice wine, but it's just so intense and it so is. rich. It is. It's like, woo! 
<laughs> so for something a little lighter, but still with those same exotic flavors and a little bit more acidity, so it's a little bit more crisp, you can have a little bit of a larger glass. The late harvest is a little easier drinking. Okay. It's good, but I like the ice wine better. <laughs> I know I'm biased because we're here for the ice wine, but this is exquisite. It's so good. And this is actually real 22 karat gold. That's right, yeah. So for our ice wine and it being our flagship product, half of the wines we make at Pilateri are ice wines. We're the largest estate producer in Canada and the world. We put that very special 22 karat gold label on there to symbolize how much work goes into mm -hmm. it, the rareness of it. A lot of people don't realize how lucky we are here in the Niagara region. We can make ice wine every single year. That's amazing. Whereas most places in the world, if they're lucky, can make it every three to four years if it's cold enough. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you so much, Richard. We're going to be tasting some of the ice wine coming up, tasting more of the ice wine coming up in a special cocktail. And we're going to be trying some yummy snacks as well. So don't go anywhere on Morning Life. Well, Michael Jackson. A biopic could be in the making, right? I'm not sure. Yeah, two questions that I have. Um, one, who's playing Michael Jackson? Right. Yeah. Do we know? We don't know yet. Okay. Two is, what story are they telling? Well, yeah, that's why I ask about the estate, <laughs> right? Like, what, like, you said complex. Yeah. I. This, this is just. These are just the tiniest little details that are coming out about this. All we know is that a script has been written. We know who's directing he's it. He's a and huge director. Huge, huge director. Great director. Great director. So. I mean, look what he did with Freddie Mercury, because the same could be said for Freddie Mercury. What story are we going to tell? And he managed to tell quite a few within that one mm -hmm. show. So I would assume that he's going to touch on a lot of Michael's different stories, his children, but I didn't his think relationship. Freddie was Freddie, quite as no, controversial as Michael Jackson. No, there wasn't quite the same stories with those two. In his day, he might have been, if you think about it. Huh? No. I don't know. I don't know. What What do you mean you don't know? What well, was, was Freddie was... Mercury and Michael Jackson? Oh, well, I don't think the two of their stories, I don't think their stories are comparable. I think no. you're comparing apples and oranges at this point. But I do think there was a lot of controversy with Freddie Mercury in his day. And there was a lot of controversy with Michael Jackson in his day. And still to this day. Yeah. And still to this day, yes, unfortunately. So it'll be it'll be interesting to see what happens. Yes. And mm -hmm. the people will be talking about it like we are right now. <laughs> yeah. And having those debates. And yeah. what story are you going to tell about Michael yeah. Jackson? Yeah. Uh, Snoop Dogg, Gloria Estefan, and uh, Jeff Lynne, as well as Sade, are going to be inducted into the Songwriters Hall of Fame this summer. Can you sing along, or are you just like, yeah, like, I'm kind of like, I'm kinda like, you like but me? I, I'm, but I, I can sing along, but I don't always get the lyrics right. Yeah. Like, I'm right. one or, of those people or, that'll just, d you know. We're on the same team. Yeah. Where it's like, you know the lyrics. Kind of like they're stuck in my head. It's a curse sometimes. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I, well, I'll i sing the song and I'll pretend I know yeah, the lyrics. Right, like, yeah, I will yeah. belt it out yeah. like, you know, the brick wall is perfect, but it's not the lyric at all, you know? <laughs> <laughs> but uh, that, to me, that lyric will be it. Yeah, or like, you're just like, you're kind of humming through the verses and yeah. then to the choruses, yeah. you, yeah. you hit the post, like, right <laughs> yeah. out of it, I know the song. And my kids call me out on it. They're, they're like, Mommy, you don't know the words. <laughs> I'm like, but I do. At least I think I do. Yeah. All right, good Taxi stuff. Drivers. Um, coming up after eight, so. We're going to check in with Chef D. He's not. Oh, he's yeah. not Chef in, D's here? No. no. He's in Barbados. <laughs> We're going to Barbados. <laughs> How come I wasn't notified of the I flight? Know. Yeah. yeah, he's yeah. coming to us from Barbados, so we'll get to him yeah. uh, there. Brian and oh. internationally best selling author Jesse Thistle is going to share right. his journey uh, ahead of a mental health awareness event. Very important fundraiser coming up next month. Okay. We were talking about Dolly in our last chit chat. Oh, it's her birthday. Yeah. Do we know how old Dolly Parton? Might she can be, be like 120. Yes. Doesn't matter. Whatever. Doesn't <laughs> matter. Timeless. She's the age of this one. Yes. Happy yeah. birthday, Dolly Parton, and happy birthday to anybody celebrating on this January 19th. Happy birthday. <laughs> this is where the magic happens. This is where the ice wine is actually pressed at Pilateri Estates. I'm here with Chris. Chris, take me through the process. After you've picked the grapes off the vine, where do they go? So what would happen is they would get loaded onto a truck and then the truck would be brought here and okay. we would offload all the uh, pallets and then weigh them and then we would dump them into our hopper here and then individually would go into each one of these baskets, our oak basket presses here, okay. and then get loaded onto our presses over here. Is there any specific reason why they're made out of oak? Uh, just oak is a very strong wood. It's yeah. able to withstand the pressure and keep the grapes still in and it would just prevent any kind of issue. Yeah, now I'm assuming and if it was a different grape season, it would squish through these holes, but because it's frozen, yes. 
Yes. It all stays in the barrel. I've just got visions of like Lucille Ball in there, like stomping her feet. I feel like you guys should have me back in the summertime to do that. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So you have a big machine. It carries it over to the presses. Yep, it gets loaded onto here, and then we will slowly get the grapes slowly pressed down to about 300 bars just to get every last drop that we possibly can because it's incredibly hard, and they're like little pellets, mm -hmm. um, and they're frozen solid, so you have to crush them really, really hard to get all yes. that juice out. Yeah, so some like the weight of someone's foot back in the day when they used to get in there. I guess back in the day they didn't have ice wine, did they? It would be awfully cold on your feet. So, yeah. So then it goes into here. This is the kind of tray that holds yep. all the liquid? All the liquid would, be, uh, would go into the tray and we have a little hole in the back where uh, the liquid would be dropped out and then would go into our nice little tray in the back and then get shipped out to the other facility. And then it gets out to the other processing. So do you have all of these working at the same time? Yes. Wow, we, it must be loud in here. Yes, it will get kind of loud in <laughs> here and we'll have a team analyzing the bricks of the sugar to make sure that it's of the, the best quality. So whether it's uh, selectly harvest or ice wine, we'll have teams wow, checking. And, uh, and this is all happening in the middle of the night? All happening in the middle of the night. I love that part about ice wine harvest. I mean, it's not great because it's cold and it's dark, but at the same time, it's kind of exciting because it's like mysterious almost when you have it at nighttime. Yeah. That's absolutely. the way I see it. You're on the field and you're like, that's not the way. <laughs> It's a lot of fun, actually. Yeah, I bet. Yeah. yeah, I bet. All right, well, thanks so much for teaching us and taking us through the process. Coming up, we try some yummy food and we drink some ice wine. More coming up on Morning Live. Oh, yay, you're here. It's Thursday. Get on in here because we like to pass along good news, yes. don't we? We pass along uh, the news of our adoptable pets that we have uh, on each and every Monday. Mm -hmm. uh, morning, Brian. Morning, morning. Emily. Morning. Morning. Do you guys remember Lacey from Monday? Yes. So cute. She yep. was our adoptable pet. <laughs> Yay. Oh, look at her of little Seven-year-old Lacey, good news, has been adopted after oh. uh, one of our viewers by the name of Reg saw her on the TV and the where she was doing her sales pitch right there. <laughs> <laughs> and Reg, if, if you're watching right now, could you get a picture of, of Lacey watching herself on television? Yes. Wouldn't that be awesome? <laughs> Wouldn't that be good? Because I guess, I guess uh, Lacey yeah. left for her forever home yesterday to join Reg and, and his family. Yeah. So. Oh, that's so nice. Congratulations Lacey. to Reg, Lacey. Yeah. Yeah. And the whole gang, and that's why we love our animal adoptions every day. Mm -hmm. And uh, oh, there's Mary Lamb. We see you have Mary's arm there. Yeah. <laughs> so way to go, Mary. And Thanks. shout out to all the staff and all the volunteers at mm -hmm. all of the shelters that we deal with yeah. because it's, you do good work. You do some good stuff, yeah. and it's a big part of our show. So, yes. All right. Now to that other news, Brian. <laughs> Okay, do I, I have to bring the bad news <laughs> yeah. down. Yeah, well, <laughs> so, Yeah, so sometimes it's, that's just the way it works. I would love to say sunshine and mild, but I can't do that. Um, no sunshine. There, uh, she must be gone because there ain't no sunshine when she's gone. And, that, and that's exactly the way it is. <laughs> we had that last <laughs> throwback <laughs> Thursday when you weren't here. Yeah. Really? Did. Did we yeah. Did. Yeah. Yeah. Did. Yeah. Missed that? Well, yeah, you know. Missed it, that one. So it continues. There ain't no sunshine. Here with Michael, who is the executive chef at Pilateri. We're making a very special cocktail that involves the ice wine. What do you have for us today? Yeah, so today we're doing a peach mule, which is my riff on a Moscow mule. Delicious. Um, and we'll start with just some plain old lime juice. We'll do about a half ounce of that. Smart, okay. And then this is just some peach puree that we make in-house, and we'll go... Oh, this is from the fresh peaches that you have in the orchard, I'm assuming? Um, well, in the we're not in the summertime, yes. yes, correct. Oh, that's so nice that you can save it and get a whole year's worth yeah, out so of it. Yeah, so that's what we do is we make big batches of it and then we freeze it. Super smart. Um, this is just plain old vodka. Okay. Don't make that, I'm assuming. <laughs> no. <laughs> and then this is the our... Deliciousness. Yes, the 2015... Reserve. Reserve Riesling Ice Wine. Yeah, and we're okay. just going to give that a little bit of a stir. I can smell it already. Like, I can smell the tanginess mixing with the alcohol, of course. But right, absolutely. I can smell the peach puree so almost, th too. This is, the ice wine is perfect because a lot of people think that it's typically a dessert wine, but mm -hmm. we like Super to sweet. use it in place of, like, simple syrups and cocktails. Oh, that's so smart. Yeah, so. Um, and then this is just some ginger beer that we make in-house as well. What's it called? Uh, it's our Barrelhead Ginger Beer. Barrelhead Ginger Beer. Yeah, oh my just... gosh, ginger beer like takes me back to when I was a kid. Yeah. <laughs> Honestly, I, like my mom being British used to serve it to us and it has that really kind of strong taste to it, but L the aftertaste little bit of spicy. as well. Yeah, like, yeah it's, absolutely. It's kind of It'll smooth. definitely wake you up, that's yeah. for sure. <laughs> yeah. And then just we just garnish with some oh, lime, some candy ginger and some That fresh candy mints. ginger is intense. All right, well, we all know that I have to try it just to see. 
I think the fresh mint, I can smell it already, yeah. adds to the ambiance of the whole cocktail. Oh, that's delicious. You can taste the ice wine, you can taste the peach, but the ginger beer, I feel like, is what's making this cocktail yeah. amazing. Yeah, so we served this all summer long on our patio at Barrelhead. Mm. Um, nice and refreshing and mm -hmm. kind of, again, gives you that wake up that you yeah. kind of crave in the summer, right? That quench. So good. Yeah. Uh, now, the Ice Wine Festival, too, is happening every weekend in January, so you can check that out. And coming up, Michael is going to showcase one of the desserts that they are um, putting out at the Ice Wine Festival. So stay with us. Lots more to come on Morning Live. All right, that's your forecast. Time for this hour's chit chat. <laughs> okay. There's so much to unpack here. There's a whole right breakdown now. of this come out that I've done. Not like, a big cuddler. Like, okay, guys, look, I think we could skip the stories because there's a lot to unpack with Tim. I'm right not now. a huge cuddler. I, no, but, but, yeah, but I'm, like, a big, I'm a big hugger. I like to but, hug people. I like. If you notice, like when I talk to you, I generally have my hand on you. Yes. My sweaty. Okay, and HR <laughs> has sent emails Since, about this. That's why yes. I was like, I can't do it. I won't do it. No, but you cuddle your kids on yeah, the couch. Like, yeah, even, like yes. when you put them to bed, like you cuddle them. Yeah, um, I, yeah, I, yeah, okay. Okay, yeah. so oh. Tim's not a big cuddler. Not a huge cuddler. Sorry, Liz. And this he's, all he's got unpacked cuddler. because he thinks Ted Lasso is too nice. Yeah. <laughs> How is that possible? Like, uh, it's one of the best shows ever. <laughs> like, Annette and I are finding this out. This is the we have Mary Lou speaking right here. now when I talk to her about Ted Lasso. She loves Ted Lasso. Yes, yes Mary, Lou. Mary Lou. She loves Ted Lasso. We are with you. Well, if you're a fan of the show, you'll have to wait a little tiny bit longer for the big season three premiere on Apple TV. <laughs> but Roy Kent. Yeah, Roy, so it's, Roy, I'm Roy Kent. Roy Kent. Kent. <laughs> Kent. If you watch the show, you know. We can't say it on TV. Oh, favorite he's character. My favorite character. <laughs> Same. Yeah. He's the best that show yeah. it just it, and I, very I tried to get my dad to watch it because right. my dad loves soccer he is a huge football fan but he won't watch it because of the profanity so I think it goes back to the whole like trailer park boys about them being a little bit too rude yeah. like he can't watch it and it's too bad because my dad loves comedy and yeah. he loves football but the swearing is just too I'm much. Su I'm surprised Mary Lou likes it she's not a big swearer either. Oh yeah. maybe not yeah. in front of you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> she hangs out with Annette and I watch Mary it. Lou's like a sailor. <laughs> <laughs> you all right there? <laughs> oh, I got some laughs today. All Goodness, right. thank Do you. Have, we have time for one more, right, after that? <laughs> <laughs> uh, things might have turned out quite differently had Brad Pitt quit giving rides to exotic dancers one day <laughs> earlier. We got what? time for this, yeah. <laughs> right now, have you guys had any really odd jobs that kind of yes. either got you where you wanted to be or toughened no. you up or taught you a lesson? Okay. Or don't take this the wrong way, but I worked in a strip room. Tobacco. Wow! <laughs> That's what you call it. It's, it's yeah. where you take the cured tobacco right. off a stick. You yeah. strip it off the stick. And you did that? Yeah, for many summers. Many, yeah. yeah. Wow. Sure tobacco I turned a driveway. Like, I was turning oh, driveways for really? a hot minute. Good for you. I know, right? Hot it's not. Uh -huh. <laughs> See what I did there? Yeah. Uh, I, I dressed up for kids' birthday parties. I was Darth Vader one time. I was like, oh. oh my gosh, is that when and you were trying kid, to get your acting yeah, career off yeah, the ground? Yeah, and this kid's like, <laughs> kicked me in the shit. He's like, you're not Darth Vader. I was like, oh, I'm good. You're right, I'm not. Then I was the Energizer Bunny, and oh, man, here I am. Somebody kicked you. You're not the Energizer <laughs> Bunny. I was just like, oh, God. <laughs> Oh, and look where it led uh, you yeah, to. Right. So that yeah. probably got you to you here. Guys just making fun of me. <laughs> no, so I think I that's right great. You, sometimes you got to do what you got to do. Right. Annette strips some tobacco. Yeah. You yeah. dressed up as the bunny, and I, yeah. you know, tar driveways. Yeah. And drink some ice wine. Yeah. Good yeah. Job. Drinking ice wine was so good yesterday. Watch this. <laughs> Well, we're back here with Michael at Pillatory Estates, and I want to mention that this cocktail, the Peach Mule, is actually being entered in the cocktail competition at the Niagara Ice Wine, and I have a feeling it, it just might win. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thank you. You got my vote. Okay, what are we trying here? We've got something tasty that we're going to try. So today we're pairing the apple blossom that I made uh, with our, again, our Riesling uh, ice wine, okay. our reserve ice wine. Okay. Um, we're doing this for the um, festival, which okay. is the last three weekends in January. One has already passed, but uh, the next two coming up. Um, and this is just an apple blossom that I've made with a little bit of puff pastry, some caramelized apples with some nutmeg and cinnamon, and some oats in there, and topped with some raw sugar. Amazing. Okay, now what's this that you're going to put on top? So this is just some mascarpone that I have. It's just kind of like a sweet Italian cheese, and then I'd make it even sweeter by 
Put mm. a whole bunch of honey in there. Amazing. Now, ice wine traditionally served as a dessert wine. You have it with dessert. But, Correct. I mean, sometimes that could be a bit of a sensory overload for people. If they're like, oh, no, it's too sweet. I want to pair my ice wine with something else. What else can we put with it on right. your menu? Um, my first thing, obviously, is our ice wine cocktails, right? Like mm -hmm. I had mentioned. But, yep. um, of course, the pizzas. We make a large variety of pizzas. Here Apparently, at you're quite the showman when you do the pizza. You see, he stands out in this really cool outdoor um, kitchen, and you can see him from every view on the patio, and he's throwing the dough in the air yeah. and making a show and doing all this stuff, and people are just sitting there watching me like, where's my pizza? Where's my pizza? <laughs> Make my pizza. Right. That must be fun. No pressure at all. No pressure at all. <laughs> no. I don't drop any. <laughs> no, never. never. That's not your dough, sir. That's, right. that's the woman sitting beside you. That's hers. That's Correct. her pizza. <laughs> So we just have the warm apple blossom here with some cool mascarpone cheese. We're going to finish it off oh, with a little bit yes. more honey. Yes, now we're talking. Honey, apple blossom, cheese, mint. Nothing could go wrong here. Nothing this is incredible. Wow. And I love that you guys can cater to all seasons too. It's not just a summertime place. You guys can really get involved in the winter with ice wine harvest. And Absolutely. Ice and, wine festival. Yeah, Arrowhead and, and Pelletier is open all year round as well. Yeah, that's that's amazing. Tourism season never stops in Niagara. That's right. All right, so I'm gonna take a sip of this. You know, I have to like learned, yeah. I've learned Richard. Yeah, right. Richard taught me his ways. Good. And now I'm gonna try the apple blossom. Oh, it makes such a difference when you get it to every corner of your mouth. Right, absolutely. I kind of feel like, mm, I'm so snobby when I say that, but it's true. Oh, I'm really looking forward to this. It's like the breakfast of champions. Mmm, that is so good. Thank you. Mm, sorry. <laughs> Thank you so much, Michael. Yes, absolutely. Thanks oh for coming. Gosh. Ice Wine Festival happening last weekend in January. Go there, try this. You will not be disappointed.